all right okay so you did record uh, i don't know okay you did record thankfully thank you so i want to talk about uh, the bachelorette i have a couple notes i am not good at this as i used to be and i don't know if i was great before but i'm not even as good as that so bear with me however let's get into it I don't even know i want to say so much to start with i'll start with um my friend said this this way and i agreed i seconded she's the worst bachelorette in the history of the show almost the worst bachelor or bachelorette combined i think the worst bachelor would be um jake peralta i don't know if i say his last name uh i mean didn't someone like commit suicide from that so i mean not only from that i guess there's been other ones too but like he was not okay however she's the worst not in that sense thankfully <laughs> god forbid i don't think anyone not god forbid because no one's going to do that for her it, she um she's she just baffles me she just like i i i don't i don't know i don't know i don't know right now watching this i think it was the weirdest episode um my friend was texting me i was like was still working and she was texting me as she started it and like she kept getting shocked and shocked and shocked by her immaturity we'll say insecurity i think she's mentioned um what bothers me most is that one she kind of sets an example for girls of what's treated right and what's not it's a bad example because she has no clue about what she's talking about the other is she is kind of an example and so it can become very like oh women are like this especially older women she's 39 she's always been like this i think because she started the bachelor franchise when she was 33 32 um and my friend pointed it out it was juan pablo's season which me and her we don't understand why he was villainized because he was actually he looked like an awesome guy not like awesome because he was fun, but like he looked like a genuine good guy. Um, did he, you know, was he like passionate and, you know, more lovery, you know? Um, yeah, I think, where I don't know where he, I don't think he was from Spain. Uh, for some reason, I want to say he was from Spain, but um, I don't know where he was from originally, but he was Hispanic in some sort of way. Does that sound weird? Um so we kept thinking me and my friend are both foreign um foreign born we've been here most of our lives at this point but um we both kind of thought maybe that was why because it's just a cultural misunderstanding um but like he wasn't disrespectful nothing that was shown on camera at least um some contestants have spoken or at least one has spoken about how you know she disagrees with how he was portrayed by the franchise as this villain and the worst bachelor ever and oh my gosh um that he's actually you know a good person a fine person um but this claire she was the runner-up and which is weird to say but uh <laughs> if the person doesn't want to marry you then you can marry her it's not like that but um she got rejected and the moment she got rejected she just like turned it around like I you were so disrespectful or like whatever I don't ever I'm so happy that you didn't ask me to marry blah, blah. it was just like it was just because she got rejected it was delusional I hate to say that I hate to say that I am you know quite feminist um in you know like I believe in not talking badly about women but i don't know what i don't think it's a i don't think that just because she's a woman i can't say 
you know, facts, which I believe is a fact. I mean, I don't know. Maybe delusional isn't the word, but um, yeah. So it started with that. She's just like, she just sets off. She gets set off so easily. I get set off easily too, but like with more reason behind it, even if it's not reason to the outside, but she seems to be like, her mission is to be set off. Her mission is like to just be offended by everything. And I haven't really been the person to be offended until the past few years. Um, I got onto this off being offended, you know, wagon that USA loves so much. Um, but yeah, to that point, I think that was like also something with Juan, ha Juan Pablo that like culturally clashing, like outside of the US, you get persecuted, you get, you know, all these things, but you don't really get offended. Like offended to me is such an American concept. Um, you know, yeah, anyways. But, um, so I, I should have started with this. Um, it's poss possibly an unpopular opinion that I have. Um, it's, uh, right now, at least these days, it's possibly an unpopular opinion that I think she's a horrible example to girls, to women, um, and to men about women and girls. Um, because I also kind of, you know, like hearing and seeing how sometimes guys can say, oh, girls are like this, women are like this, they like this, they think this, they are about that. Uh, generalizing, like you don't need, you know, odd people out to be the norm or to like give them reason to say stuff like that right um because i i i guess i don't consider her to be i unfortunately i consider her to be average right now especially as a woman i think women get offended a lot more than any category of person that you can think of i'm not saying that they get um criticized or persecuted this uh this discrimination what's the is it an adverb what i don't even know i'm sorry my brain is mush i'm recovering i'm still in recovery <laughs> but um I'm, I'm not saying that they get more of it from the outside i'm saying they feel more offended because if someone would um, talk badly about Romanians to me, okay, I wouldn't feel offended. I would feel, okay, that's their opinion. They might be ignorant to some things. Maybe I'll, you know, talk about it with them. Or maybe I could care less what their opinion is. Or maybe I'll get upset. Um angry and i think that's different than being offended can't really tell you what the difference is right now but to me there's a difference um yeah i don't know anyways let's get to to this episode so yeah uh, it's also quite possibly uh an unfortunate representation of the current world um it's like basically base complaining it's not being revered and that it's being criticized instead. And I use the word base. I learned it. I remember it was a, an acting class in, in college. And I like it because I think because not so many people know it. it it's not used as much as it was back, I guess, in Shakespeare days. Um, and so it, it has less... Uh, energy behind it to a lot of people and so it can get the point across without <laughs> offending so yeah I think it's because and it's also to me it's a little bit more comprehensive of the possibilities so it's not necessarily um education level it's not necessarily a monetary level which the like income level is really back to you know what does that say about your education level um it's not about that it's not all it's not those specifics it kind of encompasses everything but it's basically you know someone who doesn't study but complains doesn't get an a 
excuse my bad grammar right there. That was so ironic. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of like that. And so I wish I could say it better. I just, again, my brain is mush, so I'm sorry. But um, just listen. It's probably on YouTube. Um, if you have Hulu or YouTube TV or wherever you can watch it, it's uh, episode three of this Bachelorette season. Yusuf's, um, I wouldn't say speech, but we'll go with that. Um, my friend, before I watched it, she's like, it's sad because outside it seems like he's a jerk. She used another word, but I agree with him. And after watching it myself, I don't know, he could be the worst person in the world, but I agree with him 100% too. What she does and how she is, like, I wouldn't want to be, I don't want to be associated with as a woman, um, especially like getting in there with the age. Um, she's completely classless, completely classless and completely I don't want to use crazy, but I really want to. But like she, she's so erratic. She's so offended by everything. And she has no confidence, I guess. Like one of the things that he even mentioned, I think, um, it was a group date and no one asked her, no one pulled her aside to talk. Why wouldn't you pull some guy? Like, I think it had, like, her favorite Dale in there. Why wouldn't you pull him to talk? Why does the man have to pull you in? I'm not talking about, like, oh, hold the door open and all that. Like, yeah, but maybe they're nervous, too. They're human beings, too. They don't know this process. It's COVID times. It's just so crazy. Like, maybe they're just unsure. And also, I think people can relate in terms with me, too, because I, I can, I admit it, you know, like I can sort of be uh, set off easily too. My mom has pointed this out, like when you snap at something and people don't know if I say something, will she snap or will she not? Will she be my friend or will she be my enemy? And I felt that with some other person as well. Like you don't want to talk. You're not very like, oh yeah, I'll talk to you. You're not very like open and um and and wanting to get to know someone and be there with them so um i i was thrown off by that and i wasn't appreciative of that appreciative of that and neither was yusuf um but really the the thing that i think was the highlight was the dodgeball game and to me like uh, 50 shades and women whom i've seen like 90 day fiance recently this summer and you know all these like uh, bachelorette parties with human body parts and just like um objectifying men and and themselves and as women and all this stuff like to me that's uh, base that's that's a little i don't like that i don't get that having fun great to me that's not fun it just looks so bad and it, it's not because like oh you know women should be demure and it's not because of that but why do I need to um lower myself just so I can be free if I have freedom then I can choose not to do that I can rise above it and stay above it you know like I don't need to reverse same thing with you know having you know um can say some other word but uh, being um promiscuous and like as a sexual liberation or something like why if you want to do that okay if it's in you but to a lot of people it's not i think to more people um it's not then people do it i'll say that but anyways this thing too that's another topic but this thing with the dodgeball so she i don't remember exactly but i know that the losers had to like strip off their clothes and walk home, which they're on this resort by themselves, but walk to their uh, apartments or whatever um, that way naked. And just before that, I remember, I think she had them play like with their shirts off and pants off or something. Like one team, uh, 
something like that. I don't know. And I remember I was like, that's so gross. I don't care if you're a woman or a guy, a man, like that's not a woman and a man. That's, you know, a girl and a guy. Like that's just so, I don't even want to say immature because like that's not necessarily age related, you know, it's just like a little class. And this guy was saying that and she of course got offended. Um, I think like she, it's hard for someone to tell you stuff like that, to basically judge you, criticize you, and you to not get offended and not get defensive. So I'm going to give her that part. Um, however, like I, this is not to criticize her reaction to it as much as um, stand by use of because a lot of people are not. A lot of people, including the guys in the house, like, oh, you don't talk to a woman like that. They weren't even there, first of all. Um, to hear you know how he was talking i mean until afterwards he was like shouting back and i think he was you know gotten riled up at that point too um but yeah like he had a daughter and yeah like he didn't want to be associated with that and that he didn't want that to be an example and i mean i don't know i give it to him uh unpopular opinion okay sure but like I don't know. I just, I don't feel like you need to do that. What, what does that give you to see guys naked and humiliated or, because I mean, it's kind of like a humiliation, even if they don't take it as that and like, oh, well, I like to show my body and all that. It's still a humiliation. Like the, the idea is like the losing team did that, right? So it's, it's a humiliation because you lost. If it was the winning team, maybe you could say, Oh, it was like a, a reward, right? Um, it's just like wrong on so many levels. Um, I want to kind of keep going all from that because I don't want this to be too long. But yeah, I remember another season had like a boxing uh, date. And again, I was, I should be standing straighter. But um, that boxing date still like... <sighs> It's just, I mean, but that one I could say like, okay, that's just not my thing. I don't, I don't want a guy who can box and win. You know, I don't want that much aggressivity. Aggressivity, that's not a word, is it? Um, aggressiveness. Um, and to me, that's not a quality I'm looking for in a man. Um, but this wasn't even about that. You know, it's just like, again, humiliating them and her feeling like she has the power, and which makes sense with everything else she's doing, feeling that she's a victim or not in control of herself as well. She says she's done a lot of healing and all this work. I see almost nothing, nothing, maybe a few percentages, but nothing. She hasn't healed and she hasn't worked on herself. Um, the other thing is, what the heck? What the heck is the season? What the heck? This relates to after that, she had a one-on-one -on -one date. Let's skip over the fact that she's all about Dale. So at this point, it's so fake. And you can see it that like she doesn't want any of these guys. And they have no chance. And it's also another thing that's like, I feel for them. Because like they shouldn't be put in a situation where she knows no one else she's interested in no one else but him like more so like i think a lot of bachelor and bachelorettes have that sort of like oh i think it's this person but she was so clear about it and you can see and like you just can see no one has a chance so and they're like presenting the best i just i feel so bad for them but she was by the pool with this guy zach and um that was all awkward and stuff um she again kind of made it like she she feels the uncomfortable and awkwardness for sure um but yeah he she leaned in to kiss him it was kind of an awkward moment but whatever he leaned in maybe not all the way he wasn't as aggressive oh i'm sorry fault a guy for not being aggressive to kiss you anyways but he did lean in. He didn't pull back. But she claimed that she, he pulled back. She made herself a victim. She made everything about how he wronged her. And how... Um, just like how like she's 
rejected or how bad that guy was I, in a way looking back it's kind of like she was looking to find a fault and she latched onto that which is almost nothing um but yeah she let's you know say that's kind of what happened um she he didn't pull back so he was kind of like wait what because she's like oh and she like stopped and she didn't go all the way to kiss and um she just was uh like oh nothing happened and like really nervous fake laugh it was so uncomfortable to watch the uncomfortable and i'll give this to her too the uncomfortable part also was because he tried to force the kiss afterwards and pull her into a kiss afterwards and no dude you shouldn't have at that point like the moment's gone she's clearly uncomfortable read the situation make up for it later at the date because i think maybe there would have been a date if he hadn't done that maybe not like she's not interested in any of these other guys which is sad for them um it's just it's crappy but i mean at the end of the day that's the name of the game she only ends up with one person but just the way that she's doing that is just wrong and they all feel it and there was a scene supposedly they all want to walk out because they all see that it's all about this guy people say that's jealousy like i don't think that's jealousy i think she clearly is disrespecting them in the process of this whole show if you have a favorite and you know like hey met my soulmate either say that and actually like talk about this later but um i guess i'm talking about it now either say that or um i don't know what i was gonna say oh either say that or go with the process and put that out of your mind i will tell you that i've never had tunnel vision as i've had recently for someone or like actually not recently but at that time and even if i was in this situation with that person which i felt like yep met my soulmate my person tunnel vision that's all i want that's to be with this person i would respect the other guys again either i would address it if it was that much as she seems to have uh where she cannot <laughs> live <laughs> without it um or i would just be kind and actually enjoy getting to know these other guys for real not to find faults and you know just go through the motions if that makes sense um and plus you don't really know like okay you you love it for sight great but you still have to know you still have to sort of have conversations or get to know each other so might as well just enjoy the whole process but either way um yeah i feel like her lack of respect for everyone else um is just so apparent and painful to watch i feel so bad i feel like all of these guys need a redo and i don't know if they're going to get them back with I, I'm pretty sure Tasha is um, gonna take over midway or something, but they should come back. Even if, you know, they probably weren't a match, it's it's just sad. <sighs> Anyways, and she chose to be on this show, right? So it's not like she's doing just her dating thing, but um, yeah, so but that was the, the thing. He should have, Zach should have let her walk away. He didn't um but it was there it was just a disaster the other stuff came with um the guys um had a group date or half of them had a group date with a roast and um for british people like not an actual roast but roasting of people um and so they all pretty much are you know i don't know but a lot of them had something to say about dio because everyone can tell that's all she sees he's all she sees and where to begin with that um <laughs> okay I'll, I'll begin with first of all dio he's not the sharpest light bulb is he he's he's really not he's not he's not smooth he's not sharp i think he played football i feel like it kind of shows in his aggressiveness of like 
you know, goal. Sorry, gain some weight. Um, and, but he's not sharp at all. I don't want to call him the D word. Um, but he's kind of dumb. The way that he, like, oh gosh, like it just, it just makes no sense. Bennett, I think, pointed that out, like, when he talks and he just, like, run, has, like, just run on sentences and he doesn't actually say anything. And it's just so painful to watch. They show uh, an example of that before, I think. And it's just bad. And also, like, it's just bad. And then uh, he doesn't have respect for the process either. And for her either, because if he would respect the process and her her choice to be on the show he would not seek to keep seeing her as much because i mean they see each other all the time so um, anyways um that's but that's my two cents um yeah for but yeah for every single guy to want to walk out um yeah it's not just jealousy i feel they felt disrespected and i believe they have every right to feel that way it makes sense to me um and then Easy kills the episode with the commentary. Oh my gosh, he he was perfect at it. I think that's what he does. He's well, he's a sports manager or something like that. So maybe I'm getting confused with role like jobs, but um yeah, he's awesome. Um and then Riley's reactions are priceless. I love that every time there's a reaction they cut to him because he's so expressive. Um but yeah. They do this roast. They roast basically Dale. Fast forward to the end. I want to fast forward quickly to the end. Um, well, no. So they do the roast. They leave part ways and she cries to the producer, literally cries to the producer saying that wasn't funny. That wasn't funny. And um, about, you know, them attacking Dale and all that stuff. And I think maybe it was just because you know they suck because they're not comedians but then they they show at the end her roast and she was more vicious about them than they were about dale you know as far as what we saw so i was like wow double standard wow not being self-aware um yeah then um uh, my friend spoiled it for me but um that didn't end the date i thought that ended the date they got together just to talk afterwards and she was asking these guys like what about dale is so bad basically like what is it should i be looking for something should i be you know like why is everyone on his case she kept asking every single guy this question as if she was looking for a different answer but they were all saying the same exact thing but she was like they're not giving me an answer. They're not giving me an answer. And so in the end of it, um, she gave herself the rose. I wanted to cringe and like just tear off my skin. It was so disgusting. Uh, again, I feel so bad to criticize her as a woman, but like, I also, uh, I believe, you know, in gender equality, so there you go. Um, but yeah, so, I feel like, and my friend agreed because I was like, I it the sense that I got was she was trying to villainize these people. She was trying to ask them, um, or she was trying to get one of them to tell her something good or like, oh no, he's a good guy or no, like yeah, I don't know. She she was um, not hearing what she wanted to hear. And therefore, she chose to not give either of them a rose. Not because they were bad guys, but in her mind, they're bad guys. Because they didn't tell her what she wanted to hear. And I thought that was just appalling. This whole show, and she's just appalling so far. Um, the last note I want to say, what the heck did, she, did the producers think with Tasha's um, introduction or like preview or whatever? That was creepy as heck. That was so creepy. Her face close up like that, serious, so creepy. With that music, oh my gosh. I literally, literally physically got the bad goosebumps, the bad type, the like, I'm creeped out, I'm scared, 
I feel like I was watching The Exorcist type of thing. Like, just all of it. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. But that's, those are my thoughts on um, Claire. Um, I completely disagree with her and with everything. And I'm sure I'll have more to say the next week, and, uh, the next episode. Um, I think because I've been kind of in this mushy brain this week and just tired, I have not really done my proper commentary on it, but this is the best I can do right now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really painful to watch. It's really painful. It's, it's, it's horrible. And I thought that she was, you know, she had matured and she was going to prove wrong her first impression that she left with you know Juan Pablo's season but she is basically just fueling it if anything or yeah more than that and my friend's like I bet Juan Pablo's like really happy like smile watching this season smiling like yep dodge that bullet and he would be right to do so um I think he's like definitely taking the humor in it I don't know and I really don't think he's a bad guy um but yeah like yeah yeah on a side note and I'll end with this um it definitely helps me sort of keep in check because like I said I do get triggered um we all have triggers and it's really nice to see that um how it looks from the outside especially to such an extreme I don't think I'm that bad I really don't think I'm that bad um maybe there were some times recently in the recent couple of years um but overall I'm I, but it's good, you know, to always have in the back of your mind to know <laughs> what you're not striving for. And, um, you know, like a, a good warning of like, hey, do you really want to end up like this? Um, be careful. Like I'm working, I'm really truly working on myself and I don't see that being the path I'm going down at all right now. I am in a much more secure place than I've ever been. I'm so happy internally you know life isn't perfect but I'm happy and um I'm you know shedding that offense kind of icky thing that I've adopted for the past like five years maybe less um and um and yeah like it was recently someone asked me it was just a topic of like cutting people out or not basically and um I love that uh, you know I got that question because um it put me in a position to really check in with myself like what do I really think and believe and um what I really think and believe is like even I was thinking about this watching this show or this episode was um I believe in being chilled <laughs> being like it's not a big deal um and being kind and being nice and treating everyone with respect and um compassion and being nice to them i've not done that a lot of times in the past few years or a couple of years more so a couple of years um hurt people hurt people you know, I was hurting and I wasn't in a good place. And again, that's that's another thing where I'm like, that's not me. And she's clearly hurting. She's not in a good place. She gets, she even herself, she said, she got triggered by Zach, you know, pulling her in. So yeah, she's done the work, but she's not really healed. Um, and I don't want to be triggered and I don't want to hold things against people because everyone's trying their best Um everyone wants to be loved and they're trying to best to figure out how to be loved um sometimes they don't believe they can be loved and that's also a way for them trying to be loved you know by shutting down and like no i'm, I'm just, it's just not for me people will never love me so i'm gonna shut down you know the need for love and then you shut down everything because you can't pick and choose but that's again another topic but 
um everyone's trying their best like even yusuf you know for however crappy he might be i don't know we'll find out apparently like he has you know his own issues um but i do think that yeah he's he's trying his best to freaking live out this life that we have no rules for at the end of the day we created rules through religion through politics through the randomness but we created them trying to make sense of it trying to have a guide for relationships we create you know what relationships we create categories like well you're romantic you're a friend you're this and now we have more categories i feel and than ever you're it's not like you're together or not together it's like well we're just seeing each other we're just talking we're just netflix and chilling um we're just dating to me dating is like you're dating but no apparently here dating is like non-exclusive um non-committed you're not dating to be committed you're just dating to figure out if you want to be committed to that person which makes no sense to me because why are you in dating them in the first place because dating is like trying to figure out how to me i guess it's trying to figure out how to be with this person you know curious about them excited to learn about them excited about them um but yeah so we've added all these different steps in um in a way but again like trying to make sense trying to navigate but then you also have like there's at the end of the day no rules you have people who uh don't date but they're dating um you have people who are dating but they're not <laughs> um you have um people who get married you know a couple days in and stay married forever or divorce or you have people who stay together forever but never married like you have everything um you have people who like friend zone but then you know get get together or like the opposite like you have everything there's no rules but we definitely try to create rules because it's mayhem it's crazy and we're all different and no matter who you are when you get together with another person whether it's for friendship for co-workers oh my gosh i feel like that's possibly one of like this toughest things to navigate um or a romantic relationship or whatever like you might have different rules than the other person and it oftentimes comes down to like that's compatibility but that's not compatibility that's just how you make sense of the world versus them but you both got born in the same way as little blobs of human that you just wanted to survive and love and food and um safety there's like i think three or five basic needs uh or fears there's three i think three ba like fears that we're born with like fear of loud noises fear of uh, abandonment and fear of i don't know actually the dark i don't remember the third one um but yeah you know because you're abandoned you die so <laughs> you know um so like you at the end of the day you're two people but you kind of just let you know how instead of being excited to figure out like with her too like instead of being excited about this process and about getting to know these guys even if they're just gonna be friends or something she's like i guess more focused on her and not even dale she's focused on her she's all about her and she just feels so persecuted all the time like she gets so offended so easily but yeah like um other people too i guess you know you try to rule people out based on just stuff that I don't know, it doesn't really make too much sense to me um because it's like all adopted things and 10 years ago you probably didn't have those things so what makes what makes a partner a partner at the end of the day if not the heart if not like your gut and yeah because people change and who you get together with now is not going to be the same person that you will see in front of you 10 years from now um 
and that's exciting so again it, it, i think it goes to the heart so if dio is her heart cool great go for it um i wonder his intentions if he's for real or not but either way like go for it just like be more respectful of yourself other people him just everything and she has a lot more work to do but yeah just i felt like i needed to say this unpopular opinion even though it's long and it's convoluted and it's not great um because a lot of people i'm pretty sure almost no one will say it so that sucks because it's it's kind of sheep brainwashing type of thing you know and i'm just so tired of that so tired of it we need more love and like realness and compassion and like healthy relationships and healthy people so cool i'll talk to you later bye